All right. <clears throat> All right, lobby should be the same as last time. This time we're going to have... Uh, oops, let me change the stream info real fast. Drill. Backyard Brawl Round 3 XC Fighting Systems. Perfect. All right. Looks like we are set on the stream on this side. Looks like we're recording, streaming. We're good. We just need to link the stream. We will be all set. Oh, that didn't work. Um. All right. Cool. OBS is running. Cool. We're all set. Looks like we're ready to get into this match. Um, I missed the coin flip to see who got to draft first, but I'm guessing that Teketri got to draft first, considering that Spirit of Bad RNG was the last one to grab a character. <clears throat> uh, I'm guessing Teketria. Oh, he just put his things back here. It looks like Teketria drafted Potemkin, Soul, Bad Guy, and Leo White Fang. Three Guilty Gear characters. Uh, two of these guys deal. Actually, all three of these guys deal pretty insane damage. One of them being a Wild Swinger, a Grappler, and a Brawler. Uh, nah, cough, cough. We all know Soul Bad Guy's a Grappler deep at heart. All right, let's go ahead and see what Spirit of Bad RNG managed to pick himself up here. So we delve into this. This is going to be round three. Again, oh, I did not get to see. All I saw is two season seven and one other season. Looks like we got Gold Lewis Dickinson. Character we saw from last match as well on the side of Andrew. Looks like we see a Ramlethal Valentine and a nine the Phantom. A nine pick. Oh, all right. Looks like first matchup, we're going to have Soul Bad Guy versus Gold Lewis Dickinson. Of course, Soul Soul's going to want to get into close range and just start wailing on this man. Whereas Gold Lewis can play at range three and be fine. Uh, Soul, of course, having some range three options themselves. But Gold Lewis is going to have a decent mix up on Soul here, in my opinion. <clears throat> All right. Looks like three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. Yeah, it appears that Soul Bad Guy got first turn. Soul Bad Guy mul CC or the mulling two. Goodness, I can't speak. This was uh, a little bit sudden. All right. I'm going to close my music. Turn myself on some lo fi. All right. Gold Lewis is at five six cards for some reason now oh, there we go now they're at the appropriate lock cards it's like they mold three all righty
All right, looks like Goldless or looks like Soul just starts off with a plus four guard faultless defense boost, and Goldless starts with a strike is what I'm looking at here. Soul studying the Goldless options. All right. Looks like Goldlose just goes for the Behemoth Typhoon Slam into the Night Raid Vortex. This can make the Night Raid Vortex uh, miss here, which is what they will opt to do. Alright, Goldlose landing the first hit. Very solid option here. <clears throat> Soul is now going to boost the Bandit Revolver to close one, draw one, make the opponent discard a card at random. Soul is now at that optimized range that we were talking about earlier, the range one. We're going to have to see here how Gold Lewis decides to deal with this. And I need to step away from commentary for a second, so I'm going to leave this right here. Uh, sorry about that, guys. But I, please enjoy their match while I take a quick run for a quick second. All right, I have returned. Sorry about that. Looks like I missed some strikes here. Holy moly, Soul is not having a good time, it looks like. All right. Goldlow's got a slam, a focus, and a swing in it, looks like. I see the other swing and discard here. I'm guessing swing might have been EX'd or boosted. Here we go with the other swing from... Gold Lewis, we got a Behemoth Typhoon Crush into Cross. The Cross will successfully get them out. Gold Lewis is going to close themselves back in, though. Alright, Soul with 2 gauge. Of course, Soul being able to dish out quite a bit of damage at once. Uh, we are getting to a point in the game, though, where Gold Lewis can just spam the button of uh, down with the system EX version. And that will hurt quite a bit. All right, we see the classic soul play, Flame of Corruption being played uh, to get plus two power, and then also with the cancel to get another plus one power. So this pretty much reads plus three power, close one. If they close fewer than one space. Otherwise, it's just plus one power, close one. <clears throat> so 
So this is a before action, so we'll see what this actually ends up being. Alright, what do you got here for us, Sol? Uh, looks like we're waiting on Gold Lewis to make a decision. Gold Lewis looking over all the options the Soul has. Of course, uh, taking a look at stuff like Gunflame, Volcanic Viper. Um, I think the obvious answer here, if you're worried about anything in particular, is you could look to cross out. Uh, this should beat most of Soul's options unless they decide to cross as well. This is not an EX, so you're not getting hit with anything here in particular. It doesn't have enough gauge for Tyrant Rave. Um, yeah, nothing really catches uh, Cross here. We'll see what ends up getting played. The block gets played into the Bandit Bringer, which means that if they uh, do not spend things... So now they do the before for Advance 2, so they get plus 3 power. So this is a 7 power Bandit Bringer. Which means Gold Lewis has to spend a two force or take a bunch of damage here. We'll see if Gold Lewis actually opts in to spend that force or not. Uh, looks like Gold Lewis is overspending. Yeah, it looks like Gold Lewis is choosing to overspend. Maybe. Let's see, what's Gold Lewis going to end up spending here? Did they spend? Anything? Yeah, Gold Lewis opts to overspend here, which is a little bit weird. Considering this is only 7 power. But that's not a rules thing, so I'm not going to opt to correct it. Looks like Gold Lewis is just going for the X seed to get them extra cards in hand, and now he has on specials hit draw two, which will be nice for getting his card ramped back, or his cards in hand ramped back up. Soul just stops for the prep, being at range one, pretty comfy here. <clears throat> Sends it back to Gold Lewis's turn. Gold Lewis looking at the situation, probably thinking what they want to do. It looks like they're flipping a card, maybe looking to strike or boost here. Looks like they're just going for a raw strike. Soul wild swinging. Soul will go first and actually break this. This only has... Oh wait, no, this was initiated, so it's plus two armor, so it will not break this. So Soul will deal two damage to Gold Lewis and get advantage. And Gold Lewis will end up drawing a total of four cards here. Uh, it looks like they did just that. <clears throat> because of the hit draw or the after draw two and the hit draw two. All right, Soul having three gauge, meaning he can exit here, but he can't do the optimal exit he wants to do, which is uh, play a boost, cancel it, then exit, so he gets the plus two power from the exit. Um, so we'll see. What he ends up doing here, I imagine he wants to get another strike in before he actually decides to exceed, though. He could also look to play an ultra, but I'm us usually used to seeing Soul just exceed when uh, he has 4 gauge. Looks like Gold Lewis is in opting in for another strike as Soul took a prep action on their turn. Gold Lewis just going for a grasp, and so does. <laughs> I think Soul wild swung that grasp. I didn't see if it was wild swinger from hand. But that's a, that's a pretty funny interaction when both players end up with Grasp. Of course, the uh, attacking player gets the advantage on the Grasp because the uh, speed tie goes in favor of whoever initiated the strike. Uh, Gold Lewis is back at that 4 gauge, I meaning he has both of his Ultras on the table and the EX version of the down with the system. Uh, EX version down with the system costs 4 gauge, but it does do... A decent amount of power. It does 8 power, which is pretty spooky for Soul, especially only being at 11 life. That does notably break both Sweep and Focus. And pretty much any other option that Soul can put out other than Block. It's also 7 speed, so <laughs> it, is, it, is pretty, it is pretty nice to play. <laughs>
All right. All right. So it looks like a slash was played into the Behemoth Typhoon spin. Uh, spin, of course, not going to get anything off of it. And so we'll use the advantage to go ahead and area shift. It looks like we might area shift cancel here, get the plus one power. Now he's exceeding. Yep, here's the classic soul maneuver. Now he's going to strike with plus two power. Bit of a life de deficit for Soul here, but Soul is no stranger to making up these kind of life deficits. The thing he has to watch out for is that uh, down with the system I was talking about, especially the EX version. The other version is all right. It's just three power though. Uh, looks like we just EX crossed here, which will not beat out the Bandit Bringer, and actually will make the Bandit Bringer actually worse for uh, Gold Lewis because it puts Gold Lewis in the corner now against Soul. Soul of course going to deal six damage here with the Bandit Bringer, minus the one armor, so five. Still quite a life lead for Gold Lewis. Gold Lewis, I imagine, is feeling pretty safe. A little bit scary being in the corner against Soul, but um, the main thing he probably has to watch out for is the Tyrant Rave, but he can, of course, beat that with uh, options like the EX um, down with the system. Looks like we wild swung a block into a Smash, which Smash is just going to reload Gold Lewis's hand once again, as intended. Uh, soul spending the one force in order to not take any damage from it. Being a seven life, that is the correct response, of course. Soul going for the cancel strike, getting plus one power draw two on hit. With a swing from hand and a cancel, so this means this is plus three power on hit draw two. <coughs> uh, Gold Lewis just has to figure out what to play here. I'm just kind of curious if Gold Lewis does not have EX down with the system, because EX down with the system would be pretty wild anytime now. Wild swings into the dive. That's probably not good. Uh, actually, that will do it. All right. Soul bad guy will uh, be a little bit saddened by that dive. Of course, they didn't take any hits, which is nice, but they also did uh, go down to one card, which means they are at the card disadvantage, which is going to be quite scary for them. I believe they should have one more block and some of those defensive cards left. Um, but sweep ain't going to save you for much longer here. Looks like we're badass striking. Just drawing. We're not even canceling it. Interesting. We have a lot of gauge here to spend um, for the Gold Lewis side of things, but it looks like they're just being cautious here. Alright, so we'll just preps, of course. They need to reload their hand. They're kind of short on the cards there. <clears throat> Gold Lewis just goes for a prep as well. Seems like Gold Lewis isn't much interested in initiating, even though he has quite a card advantage on the opponent. Uh, we'll see what Soul does with this. It looks like they're going to EX something. Maybe an EX. Uh, they should be out of Assaults. I believe both Assaults were played, so I'm wondering if this is like a dive. Or it could just be one of Soul's range 3 options and make it uh, speed 6. Can't download the system from here, and I would not bother with the older Ultra from here either. I'm guessing Soul's probably going to close in and just make the other one whiff. Uh, looks like we're just playing this sweep into the dive, so it's going to be 6 damage minus the 1 armor, so 5 damage from the Soul. Um, of course, it was cancelled. Yeah, the EX was cancelled with the last gauge, so it's actually more. Looks like Soul's making up for that life deficit now. Uh, taking advantage of the fact that Gold Lewis has not been striking and has been entirely playing defensively. We'll see if Gold Lewis uh, will go ahead and take the opportunity here to strike. At range 1, or if they will retreat, or what we got on our hands here. Uh, 
<clears throat> Godlo is opting for that strike now. Soul responding with the wild swing. It looks like we have a Behemoth Typhoon Crush into the sweep, so this is going to put Soul extra low. But now the problem comes into play that Gold Lewis is at kill range for Soul. <sighs> yep, Soul sweeps the card. I think that Gold Lewis is one less health. Or one more health than they should be. Yeah, I do believe that Goldos is actually at one more health. They were just at 12. Just checking with the players real fast, see if they got the uh, got the correct life totals here, because it does matter in the grand scheme of things, of course. <laughs> it looks like the players lost uh, track of it too. 90% sure they're supposed to be a uh, thing. All right. All right. Well, thought I'd check in with the players. It seems like uh, they don't know. I was n pretty sure the Gold Lewis was at 12, but I'm going to leave it to the player's judgment here. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Soul just boosts the plus two armor, a pretty good boost here, plus now draw two as well. Keeping himself alive literally on that two HP. Uh, seven HP is still going to be in kill range for Soul, of course. He's canceling here, boosting another boost. Add a card from hand to gauge, take another action. Um, He did, in fact, cancel this turn, so he could still do what he wants to do here. Looks like he's just going to opt to prep, though. Looks like he just wants to stay at the two gauge. Uh, Gold Lewis having a full hand here is probably going to look to strike and potentially close this out. If they have EX down with the system, um, unless it's met with a block, I'm pretty sure is unbeatable. Soul thinking real hard here, of course, being at two life, you kind of got it at that point, thinking real hard of what to play. Goldlo is actually rethinking the strike right now. I think Gold Lewis, uh, might be realizing that they... Well, on on defense, I don't think Lil Lewis is at kill range. Uh, looks like we are doing the Kiss of Death boost. Makes sense. We're going to spend uh, two force to strike, of course. Then we're just going to strike with a regular card. <coughs> we're going to pull out the block from there. Just regular download the system. Alright, so this is a four power download the system, spending two gauge. Uh, already has two armor, so doesn't need to spend anything on the side of soul in order to actually block this entirely. So, 
Yeah, Soul's completely fine. He just gets the block for free engage. That goes away. Down while the system's been used. This is actually really good for Soul because uh, now he knows that the Gold Lotus no longer has EX down with the system. Because EX down with the system is going to win against most pretty much everything except for block against Soul. Uh, of course, notably that the Gold Lewis player is out of sweeps as well because both sweeps were used. An EX sweep was used earlier on in the match. So we will not be seeing any form of EX uh, down with the system at all. Doesn't take much to kill a 2-life soul now that they're out of blocks, but you still do have to be careful because soul can still murder a 7-life gold blows. It is entirely possible. Well, let's uh, do on a quick think here of what to do for their turn. Um, to get Tria, just going to go ahead and check their discard pile. You're probably seeing what they have left in deck. Gold Lewis backs up five. This is very telegraphing of the burn it down unless they have any copies of Crush left in order to get that plus one range. And then it could potentially be a mix up, but this is looking like a burn it down angle from here. Soul's probably cooking up an answer, but burn it down is something that's not too hard to dodge from this range because you can just play something like a dive or anything that closes three into it. Um, you do have to close three though. Because oh wait, actually no, because this is only range five. They only have to close two. Yeah, they could do anything that closes two as long as it's faster than range three, and they are pretty safe from this and have gold lows at range one after spending three gauge. <clears throat> So I'm pretty sure Soul is expecting the burn it down to be coming. Question is, do they have the EX burn it down, and does Soul have a response? Because at this life, burn it down will just completely murder Soul if it hits with no blocks in the uh, deck. They could opt for a reshuffle here, see if they can get any of the blocks back. They only they have one engaged though, which is a little bit unfortunate for them in this scenario. They'd have to get it back in their discard to get it back in deck. We will see what the players do. A soul could also just opt to close in right now to negate any chance of that being played, but that does give the soul or the turn back to Gold Lewis, which can be a bit scary for Soul. Soul just going to boost this, which is the flame of corruption with the close one. Uh, probably just to get in. This offers anything that closes three in op a way to get in. Uh, they will just draw for an turn instead of doing that, though. Um, I'm not sure if Soul has any dives left, but dive is the thing. Oh, the scramble coming in. Do they have EX down, or is it just down? It is just down. Down should just close this out here. Uh, yeah, this doesn't have plus one speed, so Heavy Mob Cemetery cannot be validated here. If Never Beat the Mob Cemetery had four speed, this would win Soul the game almost. And the dive gets wild swung. Oh no. Oh no. This is this is turned from Gold Lewis's game to win straight into Souls. Soul has four gauge available. Gonna do the same thing to Gold Lewis. Can Gold Lewis draw the option that wins the or that brings this back for them? Three speed to five speed, and they will not. What a comeback from Soul! Holy moly! That was such a comeback, all the way down from being several life down, bring Gold Lewis all the way back down. Very well played by Tekatria here. <clears throat> 
bring this back. Ketra revealing that they had a gun flame, a Fafnir, and a focus in hand. Uh, yeah. Both, uh, it looks like good options there. Yep. They're just kind of revealing what happened real fast before they move on to the second one. All right. Let's see. Yeah, looks like they are just currently discussing uh discussing the end of the match. Have something to like look at. It's a nice little thing to kind of go over after you've uh, played a match, especially if you've lost. Just kind of look over, see what you might have been able to do better, anything like that. <clears throat> Let's talk about cards, talk about the matchup, etc. All right. Gold Lewis is being put away, and so was Soul. Dragging it on over to the trash bag. Leo Lightfang versus Ramlethal Valentine. I feel like the way this matchup has to go is Ramlethal just wants to keep Leo at probably range 4 to 5. And then just keep Leo over there. <laughs> Get Leo in a corner, keep him away from Ram. Because if Leo gets in, Ram is not going to have a great time with that plus 1 speed. <coughs> It looks like they are flipping the coin again. Let's see who goes first. It looks like they got heaven. Alright, it looks like uh, Leo Whitefang will be going first. Of course, Leo Whitefang's job in this matchup is his uh, normal work of art where he gets in and he starts swinging at your face. Plus one speed, plus one power while swinging at your face. Makes quite a bit of his options pretty scary. He, I believe he has a decent amount of range two options to just kind of work. Advance two, one to three... Yeah, he's a he's got a good good amount of like range two options that work as well. He could do range three as well. <coughs> Probably wants to do range two though. Ramlethal, of course, wanting to keep Ram or White Fang as far away as possible, preferably in her range, which is four to five. Um. And yeah. I imagine Leo's either going to be boosting or making his way in immediately. It looks like he's just going to go straight for the stun immunity draw, too. That is a stun immune Leo light thing. Oh, boy. Let's see how Ramlethal will opt to deal with this. As Leo can safely play most any get-in tool right now. They will eat damage for it, of course, but they will still get the get-in part of it, since they are stun immune. I have to imagine Ramlethal is going to want to just try and push Leo away to kind of 
say, well, you're stun immune, but at least you're farther, a little bit farther away. Doesn't get the stun on Ram, and then Ram is uh, not being sad about that backside. Alright, so we have a badass boost in response to the Leo Light thing. It's a stun immune boost. Which means Ram is looking for that extra damage and that little bit of protection that is offered from the uh, badass bonus. <clears throat> We're getting another boost. Exceed no cost. Add this to your gauge and take another action. Whoo! -wee. Fireball. One fireball is down for Leo. Leo is just swinging this, really. Wild swinging from range 4. I respect it, but holy smokes. I don't think they have a lot of things that hit range 4. They have Gestover. They have Dive. They have Fireball. And they have Con Shield. They, of course, have the uh, Ultra Stall Verbal, but you can't play that right off the bat. It just doesn't work. Or you can't pay for it because you don't have the gauge for it. We, of course, happen to strike here, but from Wild Swing. Oh, is Ram also going to Wild Swing? Is this... The player's not... Huh. Maybe the players just don't want to commit any resources from their hands. Looks like we Wild Swing a block into a sweep. That's a sweep down for Leo and a block down for Ram, and it looks like Ram came out on top because they got a gauge. All right, let's see what uh, Ramlethal opts to do with this info. The only thing I can imagine that Leo would wild swing for is they don't have any options like dive in their hand. <sighs> dive or... Uh, Stall or any of the options they hit a range for from in their hand, so I'm guessing that's why they wild swung. Looks like Ramlethal will be the one to get in closer with the close one draw two. I believe they are thinking whether they want to cancel or not. I imagine they're looking like they will, yeah. Looks like they're just going to go ahead and cancel here. Range 3, though. EX attack. Alright. EX from Ram. What will Leo do in response? <coughs> just wild swing it. Plus 1 speed dive. Will actually beat out the dust here. So that is incredibly bad for Ram with all. Now Leo is in there, and now it is Leo's turn. This might hurt a little bit. Yep, 5 because of the armor from the EX. Makes sense. Alright. Leo just wild swing. Makes a lot of sense here. Wild swings into the block. Gonna get pushed away for his troubles. Uh, will they spend the one force to uh, take... What less damage? Nope, they will just happily take the one damage and put it into their gauge. Ramlethal sitting at four cards now has Leo in the corner where she wants him, but Leo's at range three, which means they have options that hit again. Not good for Ram. We will see if uh, Leo keeps up with the wild swing here or if they are going to play a card from hand. They do have a full hand to work with if they wanted to go with that option. We have an EX strike from Ram. <coughs> uh, this will be invalid, of course. EX Aralumo, huh? So this is just four damage. Now Ram is in Leo's face, which is what Leo wants. I'm a little bit scared for Ram here.
All right, Leo, of course, just going to Wild Sling at range one. They have a lot of things that hit here. We got a cross on the side from Ram, which means that Blitz Slog will go first because it does have six speed. And they did, in fact, take the six damage. All right. Leo does gain an advantage, so Leo will be striking with a Wild Sling again. We have the Focus into the Cross. Cross will deal two here, Focus dealing four back and drawing a card. Yep. All right. Looks like Ramlethal will get to another turn here. Life lead not doing too bad. We're only six health down. That could have gone worse, but it did not. So we are pretty happy with his outcome, I think. Obviously, now we just want to get away from Leo and leave him into the corner. But it looks like we're striking with an EX. I'm kind of curious what this is. Wild swinging from Leo. Going to just be the focus. Uh, This doesn't hit. We see the EX... Bayonetta. I never noticed that our card arts had different arts for the for this card, but that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, this will not hit. <clears throat> Leo will deal five and draw one. Ram will prep because they have advantage. Now the life leads looking the bit scarier, especially at range one. That's how much gauge that Leo has. Holy moly. All right. Leo in the corner with Ram. Leo the one in the corner. Ram just prepped. I think uh, Leo's thinking about what to do here. I'm guessing they're just going to probably keep swinging, though. Looks like they're going to boost and then swing, though. Draw two, put a card from their hand on top of deck. It looks like they're going for a coordinated wild swing here. Cancel, of course, and then wild swing. Yep. Plus one speed, plus one power. Wild Swing from Ram. This is a 5 speed. Oh, this puts Ram in the corner now. 6 speed, actually. 6 speed, 4 power is going to break the Aggressa Ordano. <clears throat> and then that will give Leo an advantage once again. I if Leo has the other Eisenstrom to do this again. Nope, just going to EX strike from hand, though. But just could just be a soul as a... They might be looking to just kind of close out this game at this point. The only thing that's going to be EX assault here, of course, being the EX cross, which is not available, or the EX uh, Dauro. Looks like a single Dauro is played. This is EX stall verbal. Wow. It gets one speed because of the EX version, so it gets ten speed. Ha! That's actually really smart. <gasps> that is that is actually insanely smart. Alright, I respect that. That is just uh six damage or seven damage actually. Does not give Leo advantage. Just kinda let the stall verbal whip rip there though. That checks out. Yeah, this uh, game is looking real rough for our Ram player here. Another EX from Leo. Got the Mortabato played. This also actually beats uh, EX Assault. I actually completely forgot about this card for a second. That was a very good option from Ram to just play that. Well, I guess it's not a 
very, very good option. Maybe it was. Let's see. Yeah, they. I don't think they have any other. Uh, yeah, they don't have any other EX. I don't believe, except for EX Assault. Oh, there's a slash right there. That was EX Assault. Yeah. So yeah, it was a good option from Ram. Keeps Ram a, a little bit more alive. All right. Ram is playing a card. Leo just got a wild swing here. Uh, this is a two-speed con shield. Which is going to hit a smack ram for death, actually. Ah, my exceed mode. Zero-speed con shield. Yeah, it still works, though. All right. And that will do it. To catch her, you're going to take it up uh, 2-0 over the uh, God of RNG. Or the Spirit of RNG, sorry. And we will, of course, stick around in case they decide to play the third match. They are not obligated to, as Teketria has already won, and we'll move on to the next round. But they might anyways, just for data. So we will stick around and see what they decide to do. Okay, Ram gets put over there. They might be talking about the match, or they might be talking about whether they're going to play the last round or not. Last round will be Potemkin versus 9, if they do decide to play it. They, of course, are not obligated to, so we will see what they want to do. Well, it looks like they are going to op. It looks like I see nine being pulled out. They're possibly thinking about just uh, playing the last one. Yep, looks like they are going to go ahead and play the last one. So we get an extra game as a treat for you guys. Of course, uh, Tikatria does not need to win this match because they already are up 2 0 in the. Yep. Uh, this is Phantom's side card, so I don't know why they just handed that over. Yeah, they just now noticed. <laughs> I was about to type. <laughs> oh. All right, cool. <coughs> All right, so we have Nine the Phantom versus Potemkin. Nine the Phantom is going to want to play a zonary game here because Potemkin is going to want to come in and deal a million damage at range one. Of course, uh, Nine is not going to want to let that happen. So I totally expect to see a pretty big zoner Nine here looking to play Kunzai over and over and over again as much as they can. Definitely probably see some Flame Punishers, maybe Pressures, that kind of stuff. We'll see a lot of 9 zoner tools this match. I'm almost certain of it. Oh, looks like they're just getting everything sorted here. getting the grid all ready to go. Of course, the interesting thing about 9 here is that she starts off with a sealed area. So half of her specials are sealed, half of her ultras are sealed, and then of course her astral is sealed as well. But she can get any of these other cards, not her astral, by uh, doing her effect, which will allow her to, on hit, she can seal a copy of her tech to add a card from her sealed hand to add a card from her hand to her gauge, 
and then on cleanup, she can seal the attack. Assuming there's no sealed copy of her attack already. Normally what she'll like to do is she will seal something like Spike after hitting it to grab Kunzite. And then once Spike's in here, she can then seal Kunzite to grab Spike. And such like that. And she has one for every single normal. She has one for Grasp, Cross, Assault, Dive, Spike, Sweep, and Focus. And then she can also get another copy of Flame Punisher if she decides to seal a block with a special with a boost on one of her cards. Of course, block doesn't hit, so she can't won't be able to trigger the effect on it for block to seal it. But she can use it in effect a boost on her card to seal it. And then she has Azerite Inferno, which she can seal another Azerite Inferno to get Azerite Inferno if she so wishes. Uh, she will never have both Azerite Infernos in deck at any point in the game, as she will have to seal and get it unsealed in order to get access to the second copy. Uh, Colorless Void, of course, being the Astral, will come into play much later, and it's cost 9, and it has a 9 for power, 9 for speed, it's 3 range, and it does get reduced by 1 for each normal in the sealed area. It is definitely a win condition the 9 has, and we may see her just start sealing a bunch of normals to look for this. There are plenty of shenanigans you can do with 9, so I'm not sure which playstyle we'll see today, but I imagine we're going to see a lot of zonary stuff. Potemkin starting up with an advanced 3 being the grappler he is, that makes a ton of sense. Get into range 1 as early as humanly possible to not deal with any of the zoner tools that 9 might try and throw at you. No, Potemkin being a zone or a grappler is going to have plenty of tools to close in, so we'll have to see how 9 deals with this. Because Potemkin at range 1, every time he initiates a strike, he just gets plus 1 power, plus 1 armor, and on his backside, another plus 1 power, plus 1 armor to make plus 2, plus 2. Pretty scary to deal with at range 1, so I, 9 is not going to want to see much of him at all in, his, in her phase. Looks like we see Spirit of Bad RNG just kind of taking a look at their cards and assessing what they can do here at range 1 against Potemkin. Looks like they're just going to opt to advance 3 as well to get away from Potemkin. Potemkin just going to boost a Heat Knuckle to close one at the start of their turn out of this to gauge. Of course, Potemkin will have a bunch of these close one boosts, as you will see throughout this match. Um, yeah, it just really helps them get in. Okay, we have a Focus played from Potemkin and a Coral of Catastrophe played from 9. Uh, this will deal a whole 1 damage to Potemkin. 9 will take 4 for her troubles. Nine, of course, not being able to activate the ability since there is a Coral of Catastrophe in her uh, sealed area already. She does generate that first gauge, though. All right, we have the car cancel being played. Close one, draw one. I'm guessing this will be canceled so Potemkin does get the bonus on the strike. It looks like they will go ahead and strike. Now, plus one power, plus one armor in the corner. This is a very scary for nine because nine needs to get out of here. Nine having one gauge does have access to Azerite, but Azerite's really not going to help too much here. It'll get their economy going. And we got Potemkin bustered. That will be a 7 damage Potemkin Buster, 1 armor, so Potemkin will take 3, and 
uh, nine will take five and draw a card. Navy pressure gets discarded from the sweep. Now this Potemkin Buster, and then the card will be drawn. Uh, it looks like 9 is deciding on cleanup right now. I do not see Potemkin taking damage yet. Uh, add block to gauge, seal focus to grab Navy pressure. Sure. All right, so the block was played for the dive. The dive was just played to get out of corner. We have an EX coming in here from Potemkin. Potemkin's looking to close back in. This could be something like an EX Assault because of the Badass making it EX. Um, of course, Potemkin having other options. EX Mega Fist. Yeah, just EX Mega Fist. Gets Potemkin in. They draw two. <coughs> And then one of those will get swept by the sweep. Yeah, four damage to nine and six damage to Potemkin. All right. Uh, pot should be at one less, unless there was some weird shenanigans going on earlier, because it was one, then three, then six. Uh, what is happening right now? Oh, I see retreat four, uh, draw one. They accidentally drew two. I understand, though. Oh, boy. Pot just gonna wild swing here, gets the plus one armor from the... Ability and the plus one power. Yeah, just gonna invalidate that. Got the grass. Grass isn't really gonna matter here. It's just gonna deal one damage to pot and throw him. I'm guessing nine's gonna want to throw him into the corner so that she can be on the outside. Yeah. Makes sense. And then nine will take three for her troubles. Looks like they also, uh, uh, no, they did not fix it. Pot should be at 19 health. I believe. I believe Pot should be at 19 health. 9 and Pot will just go ahead and prep. Nine most likely going to be looking for a way out of this corner because she does not want to be anywhere near this, uh, this big, this big Potemkin. Potemkin going to be sitting quite comfortably at range one here. Nine will take the prep action again. Pot's going to boost plus one power and then draw one. Boosting the Let's Rock here. Sends it back to Nine's turn. Nine's going to go ahead and take a strike. Pot is thinking about wild swinging, wondering what they want to do here. Pot is pretty good at wild swinging at range one, but usually they want to do it on their turn. But, I mean, they have a lot of options to hit at range one that's not spike, so... 
they would be pretty happy to just wild swing sometimes here as well. All right. All right. Uh, pots, just kind of thinking about what this could be here. I think the probably the scariest thing for Pot to see right now could be the Amethyst. Um, but if they're really scared of Amethyst, well, yeah, there's a, there's a couple options this could be. We'll see uh, how Pot decides to respond. Looks like Potch is going to play the Potemkin Buster. We'll see if this is something like a cross range one. Yeah, it's a range one cross. Alright. Will they opt to seal it? or And get the other card or no? Let's find out. Uh, looks like... They're not opting to. There will be no ceiling going on here, and it will switch back to Pot's turn, which allows Pot to go ahead and draw two for a prep. I believe Pot's probably looking for an option to close in. Uh, looks like they might be retconning that idea about sealing the cross. Adding the spike to gauge. Yeah, it looks like they're just retconning that real fast. So the cross did end up getting sealed. That's totally fine. Technically, the timing window has passed since it's a May. Yeah, since it's a May, technically the timing window has passed, but we'll just let the players play. Nine goes for a strike at range four. Potch is going to play the Gigantorkai here. The Emerald of Enmity gets played. Gigantorkai is getting spent for. Emerald of Enmity will... Push one, then retreat one. Oh, it doesn't hit, actually, because this uh, range four plus don't hit. Yeah, the Gigantorkai was a very good option there. That was very scary. For 9, Pot is back in his preferred location. Spending the force for that, yep. Notably to decide not to get the cross back on the Emerald of Enmity, but that was a hit effect, so they could not, and I was wrong. It looks like we are seeing a change cards 5, and draw 1 for end of turn. Yep, there we go. All right. Nine will be looking for another option to get away here, I have to imagine. I don't think Nine wants to be all snuggled up next to Pot. We'll strike from one of the four cards in hand. Pot is going to respond with... Out of Potemkin Busters, so we, but they have plenty of other options that hit plenty hard. Mega Fisto gets played. Into the Amethyst of Annihilation, Megafist will go first. Of course, Amethyst is going to grant 9 uh, advantage here. Yep. Takes 3 from the Megafist. Pot will drop 2. 
Amethyst will then hit back for 5, push 2, and gain advantage. Okay. Life total still looking very even here. This does give 9 advantage. Let's see what 9 will do with said advantage. Nine thinking over their options real fast. Kind of low on cards here. Could look to potentially do something like overdrive. They're just going to strike, though. Going for the raw strike into the focus. It's just going to be Kunzite, which is going to break the focus and deal a flat five damage. Puts Pot at the uh, life deficit, but it is now Pot's turn, so we'll see how they decide to deal with this two range gap here. Pot, of course, having access to a lot of damaging tools could still just easily turn this around. We will see how they decide to play it. Looks like we're getting the Kara cancel again. Close one, draw one. And we are, of course, canceling it. Pot probably going to either close one again or just strike here from range two. And it is a strike from range two. We will not see the bonus on Pot played. We are wild swinging from the nine. Nine will actually get the wild swing off, which will put her in range one of Pot, which is kind of scary. But that puts Pot at two life, which is very dangerous. So Nine could technically strike here with uh, a lot of things and just kind of end this game. Um, Pot having access to armor, though, in the form of stuff like focus and block might stop it from being ended. We'll have to see how Pot plays on the defense here. It looks like we sealed the Navy pressure, or put the Navy pressure in gauge to gain the, uh, I forgot what that card is called, gain the Coral of Catastrophe. Five force has been spent. Two, three, four, five. Yep. Five force was spent to get out of the corner from pot. Makes sense. They are back to four range of each other. Hopefully pot has the other assault in hand. It looks like they are just playing something though. This could be dangerous from pot. Depending on what we have in hand for our nine player here. Of course, 9 having a decent bit of ranged options. I feel like they're going to drop the 5 speed, and this will close it out. Yeah. 9 the Phantom will take the third game over the pot player. Of course, the pot player has already qualified, so this is a game so win, can, or win does not count for the tournament, but as the data, it is nice to see. We'll offer them both GGs. <clears throat> All right. So Teketri will move on to O over Spirit of Bad RNG, and that is all for now. So I will go ahead and close out this stream, and I hope to see you all guys next time. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Have a good one, guys.